in a place where you're thinking about next season and getting better, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you're playing in games. It's a good problem to have, but it's very interesting dynamic for an individual player. He has hit a trifecta. And it's something I talked about early in the year that he really needed to improve on was his movement without the basketball to land into more threes. And there you saw him fill in behind the penetration of Justin Carter to get a three. That's growth and maturation right in front of our eyes for Ethan Rocky. That's a play he wouldn't have made in November. That's where it's tough for Ethan Rocky. With that four guard lineup, he's having to guard a much smaller and quicker player. Off of Brown, still going to belong to the Blue Jays. See, but I like that. No harm done. Wayne Reynolds got out and ran the floor hard. That's something he's got to do. Put pressure on those big guys to get back. You see Rogge with Andrew Warren on him. That's just a tough matchup. Blink of an eye, got it off. I like it, that's what he's gonna have to do. This team has been very unexplosive offensively at times, and he's by far the best three-point shooter on this team. He needs to be aggressive no matter what. I'm gonna ask you something about his release. Is, it, is that natural? Can you actually work on that and make that quicker? You can work on making your release quicker, but that's something that he naturally does. I mean, I think Kyle had the same thing. I was talking about Kyle Forber. I mean, you can shoot the ball as fast as you want, but if you score it up and release it, as Justin it's, Carter finishes. It's very difficult. And a lot of what people don't realize is he can get it off so quickly with his wrist. What he does so well is he gets his feet and shoulders squared extremely fast, and he gets it off. So it starts with his feet rather than just a quick flick of the wrist. We got blood on Andrew Warren, so he'll have a seat. They'll go through the proper cleaning process. Well, literally and figuratively, Creighton is the first team to draw blood here in this game. Really getting off to a good start, both offensively and defensively, against the Bradley Braves. This is where it's Sam Maniscalco time. He's got to make some things happen for Bradley. And that's where Antoine Young's got to be aware of that. See, all they're doing right now, Travis, just spreading the floor, dribble driving, flip back. Here comes Maniscalco. Here comes Eastman. That's all they're trying to do, draw fast. And they do it. And it's very difficult to defend. And right now, although rogi has got two triples and he's playing well, it's tough for him because here he is having to guard Eastman. Eastman's a 6'4 guard. Rogi's a 6'8 forward. That's a tough matchup. That puts a lot of pressure on Dana Altman on what he's trying to do lineup-wise to attack this four-guard lineup that Bradley inserts. Walk out, walk out, walk out. He's been hits the first one. He's a guy that horrible at the line. Most of the season has now hit four straight. And I'd look to see Dane Altman go to that 2-3 matchup zone. That's something they did a lot in Peoria to help contain penetration. Antoine Young. Still looking for his first two points. Coming off a great game. But keep in mind, so he came around the second. In overtime. So you really don't worry about the fact that he hasn't scored yet. He's a guy that can get his as you take a look at Wayne Reynolds. Get that out of here, Sam and a scalpel. See if the Braves go to East, but again, he scored six straight for the Braves. So here they're in that matchup zone. Eastman. Oh, rebound. Great rebound. Blue Jays out rebounding the Braves 11 to 7 at this point. Earlier in the season, the Braves, or the Jays rather, were down in game statistics as far as rebounding. Now out rebounding their points. Rocky again. He likes that side of the court. He's hit all three of his three pointers from that same area. And he loves the corner. And I like that the Blue Jay teammates are realizing who's hot and got to feed the hot hand is Rogan. 
State at Northern Iowa. If Illinois State can upset the Panthers, the Redbirds will be the number two seed in St. Louis next week. If you've never been to St. Louis for Arch Madness, I highly recommend it. It's one of the greatest college basketball tournaments there, there is. I mean, I can't tell you about the atmosphere, the Sabbath Center. Um, it's just a fun place to be. It is. It's one of the greatest experiences a college basketball fan can be a part of. And I know some people are going, oh, what about the Big 12 or the Big 10? Or, and I understand it, but it, it's, it's so much more than just the basketball then. Or St. Louis really embraces the Valley Tournament, which makes it very special. Me being a, I, I played at Kansas for two years, so I've been to, I went to the Big 12 Tournament twice. It doesn't even compare. It's not even comparable, Travis, just because the fact that it's at the same location year in and year out in St. Louis, everybody marks on their calendars that weekend, and that's where they're going to be. And it is just a special, special environment. Over 1,000 all session tickets sold to Creighton, so the Blue Jays going to have a good contingent of fans. Always do in St. Louis. The nice thing about St. Louis, it's a good driver. Even if you fly, you can hop on the train, take it right down to the Union Station area, and you're, you're right by the Sabbath Center. Something you got to like if you're a Creighton fan is you get the feeling that Creighton is starting to kind of hit their stride a little bit here in winning a couple games in a row. And do you think that has happened? This team has played different since Dan Altman switched to the starting line. Yeah, it, it, it has. And, and I don't know if that's necessarily been the case, but you never know what can spark a team. And certainly Josh Jones and Ethan Rogge have been two of Creighton's better offensive players in the latter stages of the Missouri Valley Conference regular season. So implementing them in the lineup makes sense points production-wise. Casey Harriman. Daryl Ashford coming back into the game. If you're looking for some baseball scores, the Blue Jays lose to Northwestern State today, 8-7. to seven. And in softball, Creighton over UMKC in Tulsa, 9-4. to four. Nice pass inside the Eastern. Eastern has been the offensive threat for the Braves this afternoon. It all started with Casey Harriman. Harriman being undisciplined and biting on a shot fake from Taylor Brown. You always want to be the second guy to leave the floor on defense to block shots. Casey Eastman got the ball bouncing a step now. He's seen the ball go through the hoop. He's feeling pretty good about it. So. Start assert himself and make some play. Five on the shot clock. Here's Antoine Young. Antoine Young. Drive pull up in the baseline. First two for Antoine. Travis, he does a nice job with that little step back to create some separation for his jump. Oh. He can see Edwards taking him right to the cup. That's a good looking freshman right there. Ashford to the court. Maniscalco. Draws the foul. He's hacking the act. Just a solid play from Maniscalco, pushing it. You can see that Antoine Young was backpedaling, wasn't going to commit to either player. And his sliding when he was going to take the charge. Just a heady play. That's the right call. Count the bucket for Brad. So the Blue Jays up by 10 at one point. Now a five-point game. Maniscalco could make it a four-point game if he hits the free throw. An 82% free throw shooter on the season. Isn't it funny how a poorly missed shot can almost lead to a yeah. fast break there? You saw Ashford come up woefully short and right, and it kind of just springboarded the fast break for Bradley. And the thing about the Braves, they're always looking to do that. Oh, yeah. Like a track team, always looking to run, get out in transition, make some baskets. Here's that three-quarter court pressure, fallback zone, kind of melts the clock again. The fact that they're not a very deep team, a good move from Jim Les. Jays have been prone to scoring traps throughout the season. Again, the shot clock winding down five for Justin Carter. Bradley looking to add to its 8-2 run, but that's a horrible pass. 